Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back. I am James and you are watching Blue Dog Aquatics. I do apologize that I haven't put out a video in the last couple of weeks. Uh, I've had some personal issues that I've been dealing with and I, I didn't want to do a video because you guys definitely would have been able to tell my mood was off and my personality was off and, and I just didn't want to bring anybody down. Um, but I am feeling much, much better and that is all thanks to you guys. Um, so I wanted to get back into it. Also, if you are tuning in for the first time, please do consider subscribing, hitting that like button and share with your friends. Um, you guys are absolutely amazing and uh, we welcome all the new subscribers. You guys are truly what keeps this channel going. Today we're gonna talk about filtration. Now, filtration, is a big part of any aquarium whether it's a sump whether it's a sponge filter whether it's a canister there's a lot that goes into filtration and depending on what kind of animals we have or what type of fish or turtles or anything like that as you can see mr turtle this is jack jack's weird uh it depends on what type of filter you need now, this is new. This is a 300 gallon pond. It's an IBC uh, Rubbermaid tote. Um, I actually use these a lot uh, when I'm either like breeding out guppies or uh, a temporary place for my koi. Um, we are selling my house and so we had to shut down our big pond and bring all the koi here uh, because I didn't want them to get sold with it. I'm very attached to my koi always have been uh, quite been a big part of my life. Now, there's a couple of things that we did to set this up. Now, it was a couple of weeks before the koi actually got here um, with us setting this up. We started it with just straight RO. That's all we did was we filled it with RO. We also used uh, Prime and Stability um, to help uh, with the water parameters. And then we threw in Two turtles because as you all know turtles are very very dirty we wanted that bacteria load in here and we wanted to get it going because with cycling a tank typically on something like this you'd be looking at least four to six weeks but what we did was we fast cycled uh, this pun now there's a couple of ways to do that and if you guys want me to do a video on that we absolutely can on how to uh, fast cycle or the, the different types of cyclings of aquariums. Now, with that, what we did was there's actually a sponge filter. There's no way you're going to see it, but you can see the bubbles from it. And there's an air pump. Now, that is an established filter from one of our 40s. Um, it's been running. Uh, that filter's been had bacteria on it for about a year. Uh, then, uh, we also have, now we have a couple of different filters here. Now, this is an FX4. It's rated for about 200 gallons an hour. And people are like, well, th th that's, that's not enough. You know, that's a 300 gallon pond. You're correct. Especially when we're talking about koi and turtles. These are, that is definitely not enough. Now, this filter was brand new. It had no beneficial bacteria in it it didn't have uh any established media but it has filter floss it has the filter pads it has the act, uh, activated charcoal in it that is what's all in this uh canister here but i knew that wasn't enough so we also brought this is a piece of ghostwood this is actually from my pond this ghost wood has been chilling in the pond for about a year and a half now. It has beneficial bacteria from the logs. You can actually see some of it dried out, but yeah. So that is another type of bio load that we put into here. We didn't use the, the turbo start or uh, anything like that on that. Um, my koi are, koi are pretty resilient. Um, Babies, not so much because babies haven't developed their slime coats. Um, and we actually did have some that were born this year. 
Um, but my older ones, uh, they can take a little bit of the water parameters being out of whack. However, we've been testing this thing almost daily to make sure that it was prepped. We also brought some of the water from the pond itself to put in here, which is established water, and that helped out as well. Now, I said that the FX4 wasn't enough, so then we jumped over and we put in an FX6. Now, I have filters and canisters and storage for days. I, I have so much, I swear. Now, this, the FX6 uh, produces between four and 600 uh, gallons per hour. Um, now, the difference is this has only a couple of things in it. It doesn't have the big filter pads that are designed for FX6s. That's why we have the FX4. What this has in it is this is actually just media, established beneficial media. It also has filter floss in it just to help out and retain the beneficial bacteria that is being produced from the pond. But we took some of the established clay balls from our seamless sump here and we put them in the pond or in the FX6 so that we would have again more beneficial bacteria. Now you may ask, well, is it safe to bring in so many different bio loads from different enclosures? It can get tricky, but that's hence why we've been testing this daily. Now, can this FX6 run this pond by itself? Absolutely, 100%, not an issue. I've actually used this FX6 particularly for my ponds for many, many years. Filtration is key. Now, there is no such thing as overdoing your filtration at all. That's why when you have a massive paludarium like this, that you have such a large sump underneath it. You have multiple chambers for your bio load. You have multiple chambers for your filters. That you can never overdo it. Now, there are issues that you can run into, especially when you have dirtier fish. Now, will the sponge filter in here do anything as far as keeping this water clean? No. The main reason we actually put this filter in here was because of the bio load and to create air in the water. Now, when we set up the FX4, I was like, you know, Yes, it's producing some, but it's having a hard time keeping up, mainly because of somebody right here. Hey. Yeah, I'm talking to you. That's, yeah, he's so weird. Anyway, that's why we brought in the FX6. The water has drastically cleared up. Now, there's no media on the bottom because the koi are only gonna be here temporarily uh, until I can get a new pond set up at home. If they sell before then, great, but um, I'm probably gonna have a hard time parting ways with, because these are true Japanese koi, and so I'm gonna have a hard time parting ways with them, especially since I've raised a lot of them up. But yeah, that is the importance. Filtration, is not only going to allow your bio load to develop, but it's also going to produce aeration into the water. You can see all the bubbles. It's also gonna create water movement, which is going to disrupt anything that may be sitting on the bottom. It's gonna pull it in. That's why we actually have the canisters on different sides. That way the water pushes that way, the water pushes this way. The intakes are right next to the outtakes and so that the water is always moving, always disrupting it. Koi especially, you know, we want to make sure that they have really good filtration. Um, that's why typically when you see koi ponds, they're massive and then their filter, I swear, is almost as big as the actual pond is. Which, honestly, I, I've been looking at wetland uh, 
filters, and, and I really like it. I, I think I might try to build one. Uh, obviously, it probably won't happen this year. It'll probably be something that's next year. But if that's something you'd like to see, please leave me a comment down below. But yeah, guys, filtration, you can never overdo it. My rule of thumb with filtration is, let's say that for this, for the FX4, it says 200 gallons an hour. Now, this is a 300 gallon tub. Yes, that is not big enough because I want something that should be able to do 400 or more. I always double up what the amount of water is we have for the filter. Meaning that my FX6 over here, it can produce almost double what how many gallons of water are here for its filtering. But like I said, between let's say that the FX4 is, or the FX6 is producing 500 gallons an hour, that one's producing 200, that's 700 gallons an hour, this is 300, so that's more than enough filtration. Now let's say that you're going and buying a 40 gallon tank, you want a filter that can do 80 gallons. That way you are over filtering it. It's, 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 it makes maintenance so much easier on keeping your tanks clean. So again, guys, thank you so much for all your support. I'm sorry that I haven't been able to produce videos the last couple of weeks. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please let me know down in the comments below. Uh, but yeah, we're back on track and we'll start producing videos uh, again every single day. Um, if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing. As always, guys, the big question, your tank or mine?